church. Uh, good evening, class. <laughs> no good evening back. <laughs> Thank you. A, an A is right here. Um, this is what we're going to do tonight. And uh, by the way, who has my cue card? I need to see it. Okay, can you go way in the back, honey? Okay. It's just beginning now, isn't it? Um, where's the light? I'm like a moth. Okay, here's the deal. I am going to give you uh, four topics for the story tonight. I want to welcome you to Ruby's Naked Truths, and you should be very happy that I am actually clothed. I wanted to do this naked, but it wouldn't be good for you. Thank you. And um, so and then I'm going to teach you how to be a professional audience. Then I'm going to uh, give you a thespian experience. Thank you. And I can do that because I am a sextagenarian. Up to like my chest now. In fact, um, my um, gastroenterologist told me that, you know, I'll see you in five years, and that was last year, so I'll be 70 when I have my next colonoscopy. I feel I know you well enough, I can tell you that. Um, and then I'm going to ask for you to vote. So you get to mull, we train, I turn, we vote, I tell, and then there will be a quiz. So here are the topics. Uh, do you want to hear? Don't now, but you know we'll, we'll have a chance to vote. Uh, the first topic is uh, being a contestant on Name That Tune. Uh, the second topic is uh, emceeing a male cabaret on Broadway in San Francisco. Yes, boys taking their clothes off. Uh, the third topic is becoming Ms. Nancy on Romper Room. Thank you. And it's a normal career path. And then fourthly is bonding with a young Marine. Thank you. So now I'm going to teach you how to, if you've ever been on, people are talking in the audience, or um, uh, what was the other, AM San Francisco or Oprah, this is what they do. They do a warm up and then they teach you how to clap. So I'm going to ask you to clap as fast as you can. Uh, the faster you clap, the more volume there is. So even if seven people turn out, you know, it'll sound like 14 people. So, um, okay, now I'm going to ask you to do a thespian training with me. Um, so here's what it's like to sit up, you know, properly in your seat so that you're straight. And I want you to breathe a little bit of, I know you do yoga, I know you do <laughs> yoga. So uh, the diaphragmatic breathing, okay. and. And then follow my hand, and I want you to make the lowest sound you can. Oh, louder. Oh, no, 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 no. We're in a library. We're drinking and we're yelling. <laughs> Something else we do very quickly, we uh, limber our articulators. We've already done now our, our, our vocal folds and diaphragm, and I can't say that. It's Friday night. So um, here we go. We're going to uh, yow. Can you do that with me, please? Ooh, yow. Ooh, yow. Oh, you're good. Ooh, yow. Ooh, you're afraid, I understand. Ooh, yeah. And then, uh, oh, this is the good one. All kids know how to do this one. This is the good one. <laughs> I got that one. <clears throat> oh, yes, very good. Thank you so much. Now, um, now let's revisit the four topics, and then I will uh, tell you the story that uh, involves a missed connection. And could you bring me my water, please? It's uh, somewhere over there or just decamp to uh, something new. Um, the first one was uh, being a contestant on Name That Tune. Can we hear a round? Okay, yeah, here's the deal. You're going to give a round of applause. And someone has to be the meter. Kara, do you want to be the meter? Come stand with me. Come stand with me. So um, you're going to be the meter. And uh, we'll hear a round of applause. Okay, who wants to hear the story about being a contestant on the Name That Tune? <laughs> who wants to hear about being an MC in a male cabaret on Broadway in San Francisco? <laughs> who wants to hear about becoming Ms. Nancy? <laughs> who wants to hear about bonding with a young Marine?
Which one? I can tell between the Marine and Miss Nancy. Okay, Marine. Ms. Nancy. It's good because the Marine one was a little too poignant. I'm not sure I could have gotten through it. Okay. Actually, all those stories segue into the same thing. So, um, in the old days, there used to be newspapers. And, uh, <laughs> so last century. And uh, I was reading the San Francisco Chronicle, the Help Wanted section, and I was looking under T for teacher because I realized I had to go back to children after working in the male strip club. As glorious as that was. Um, nine shows a week for 10 fabulous months. It was fabulous. And I'm in the teacher column, and I see this ad, Wanted teacher, romp room, TV prog, must have experience with disadvantaged groups. Well, I don't know if this would make your heart stop, but it made my heart stop. Ever since I saw Rita Moreno jumping around like a tomato on the electric company. Do you remember the electric company? Do you remember seeing her do that? Yes, thank you. Oh, that was good, that was good, you guys, thank you. So. I saw that and I always wanted to do that, but I didn't know that I wanted to do that until then. This is like, I'm getting like a brush back on our thing. Where should I put it? <laughs> on my collar? Okay. We used to try to hide it in the old days. Is that better? Yeah, okay. So, um, I flip out. I actually, I freak out. I grab what is a semblance of a uh, glossy headshot. It's Sunday. I drive it to the San Rafael post office. It's Sunday. I don't care. I wanted to get their ASAP. And then I wait my resume. And I don't say that I just worked in a male cabaret. Um, but I did have, it was called soap, so I did list that you have to be honest. And I um, did say that I had been in the Gay Freedom Day Parade of 1978 as a tap dancing box of old gold cigarettes, and if they're not going to ask about that, they're not going to ask about soap. So I sit by the phone and I wait. And I don't know, it's like a week. Food is brought to me, you know, bedpan, etc. I get the call, and I am so excited about going to KTVU, Channel 2, there's only one, two. It's uh, <laughs> Jack London Square. Now this is the old Quonset Hut Jack London Square. Before they moved into the glossy new thing, it's like old now, that was 30 years ago they moved. So um, this was 1981. I'm driving from San Rafael. Do you remember? Cutting Boulevard. Do you all still go down Cutting Boulevard? Yeah, yeah. in case I do because I want to see the people. And um, in the old days, that was the only way you could get to Oakland. And just as you're merging with, what is that, 80? Is that the highway you merge with in front of Golden Gate Fields? It's a little bit of a rise. And I uh, go over that rise, and the traffic, I mean, my lane is stopped, cold. There's been an accident. And I hit my brakes, and we've all actually done 180s and stuff, and 90s, and I'm perpendicular now in the lane. And the next sound I hear is a semi-tractor trailer, and my dad was a truck driver, so I know the sound of air brakes. I hear them, and I see him coming at me, looking in his rear view to see who is going to hit him. And he stopped this far from me. We all just quietly righted our cars one by one. I don't think anybody actually collided. I don't know what made us stop. But I took my turn, and I drove to Channel 2. <laughs> and Gwen, the receptionist, said, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Fine. I so want to tell you, but just I don't know you. 
And I now called in eventually to um, Miss Sally, and I sit with Miss Sally, and she's filing her nails. And, uh, well, what's your, you know, blah, 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 and I tell her, and I'm the perfect candidate. I get the call back. I'm with a number of women. Three of us are called back. Eventually, you go through the cut. Before we get down to these three women, you do have to do it on romper room set with um, props, but no children. So you have to pretend that you're who you are, but you have no children. For me, with a very highly developed sense of fantasy, this is not a problem. <laughs> so I do it. I said, oh, Jimmy, I don't feel like being a monkey today. Let's try being a chicken. And everything that she'd said to me to do just went right out of mine. She said, sing a song like you always sing to children. I have no idea, could you say that again? So I did the whole thing, and I had called myself Miss Ruby, because that was indeed my name. And the um, programming director came down laughing, because I'd spent you know, 15, 20 minutes pretending I was with children and uh, doing well. Um, so much better when you've been a teacher to not have the kids show up. So, who here teaches? Is this not true? You get a lot more done, many more papers filed. She laughs and she says, Miss Sally wants to know if you would change your name. And I said, shave my head. And uh, I chose Nancy because you smile when you say it. I tried all the R words. And because I had just worked in a strip show, I was happy to not have them know. You know, I couldn't have said Miss Ruby. Hello, I'm Miss Ruby. Get down. <laughs> Get funky. So, um, thank you. So. It turns out everybody was um, Miss Nancy in the 60s, and the originator of the show was Nancy. And it was, um, it was an absolutely fabulous job. It was six fantastic years of, of molding minds through the TV screen. And my favorite, favorite male would come from teachers or moms who said, you know, this is the one half hour I have to do the dishes or make the lunches or take a shower. And that meant so much to me. And, and I, I guess I knew that kid is sitting there with a blanket in his mouth or her mouth, and uh, not each other's mouths. And, and it was the first interactive television show, ladies and gentlemen, it was. I spoke, oh, I spoke to them like magic through my my magic book. I see Josh and Glenn. I see Kathy and Kara. I see Alan. I see Betsy. I see Ken. I see Paris. I see France. Woo! I see you, Beth. Uh, I see uh, Altadora. No, Anna Laurie. I see you, baby. There are two. Anna Laurie's here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever heard that name ever before in your life? I was hired away by KCBS Radio to do a talk show midnight to four in the morning. And um, boy, if you talk about a different audience, you've got it there. <laughs> that is when I discovered that Herbie from Alamo drinks. <laughs> Thank you, because I heard him earlier in the evening on a different show, and then when I got it, and you know, I was a speech therapist in the 70s, so I, I couldn't understand him, and I would translate for him. <laughs> You've all been really good doobies. Thank you so much for your attention.